Hi, this is Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome back to my blog. Today we're going to talk about how to balance your hormones. Does your life feel like a song played out of tune? Do your mood and energy swing up and down making your life crazy? Do you crave sugar or salt? Are you overweight? Maybe you're putting on a little more belly fat. If you're a woman, do you have PMS or painful or heavy periods or low sex drive? Are you depressed? Do you sleep poorly? Maybe you feel tired and wired. Or maybe you live on coffee in the morning and a few glasses of wine at night just to wake up and then calm down every day. If you do, you're not alone. In fact, this is how most Americans feel because we're living out of harmony with our natural biological rhythms. This is because small molecules in our body, which we depend on to keep us balanced, are running haywire. See, these messenger molecules are involved in almost every function of the body in one way or another, and they are critical to our well-being. These are our hormones, messenger molecules of our endocrine system, and our neurotransmitters, messenger molecules of our brain and our nervous system. You see, understand how and why these systems get out of balance, and you will go a long way toward understanding why Americans run around tired, depressed, and overweight. Our hormone and neurotransmitter system is another one of the key systems of the body that we must address to achieve optimal health. I'm going to explain why these systems get out of balance and how to get them back in balance a little later. But first, let me review how they work and why so many of you may feel so miserable. All of our hormones and brain messenger molecules work together in a symphony. The command and control center for all our endocrine glands is in our brain, the hypothalamus and pituitary glands. And they send signals to distant parts of the body to control everything from our stress response through our adrenal glands, our blood sugar through through our pancreas, our thyroid hormone through our thyroid gland, our sexual behavior and function through our reproductive organs, and they also control growth and sleep and mood and much, much more. You see, they're like a finely orchestrated symphony that will have to work together to keep everything in balance. These brain chemicals or neurotransmitters sent out messages through the body every second to every cell and every organ and every tissue to help do everything from move your arm to feel happy or sad. Now, there are four big epidemics of hormonal imbalance or problems in Americans today. The first is too much insulin from eating too much sugar. The second is too much cortisol and adrenaline from stress. And then the next are imbalances in sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone. And lastly, not enough thyroid hormone. Now, while I'll cover all these over time, I want to focus on the biggest of these problems, too much insulin. When you eat too much sugar and flour and white rice, your insulin levels spike. Then your cells become resistant to its effects, so you pump out more and more insulin in a vicious cycle. This causes your energy and your mood to swing and takes you up and down a slippery road towards high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, cancer, brain aging, dementia, and much more. You see, 80 to 100 million Americans suffer from this condition we call insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome, or prediabetes. It affects many varieties of people, and it's not exactly the same in everyone, but the ultimate consequence can be very similar. See, most afflicted have extra fat around the middle, like check your waist to hip ratio. That's a measurement around your belly button divided by the measurement around your hips. If it's greater than 0.8, you likely have insulin resistance. You may be tall or thin, short or fat, or any combination, and still have insulin resistance. The only sure way to know is with a special blood test called insulin response test. And it measures blood sugar and insulin after taking a sugar drink. Just measuring blood sugar won't do it by itself. You have to measure insulin. See, this is not a genetic defect. It's not an error in our development or a mistake by God. It's the simple fact that we've strayed from eating in harmony with our genes. In other words, we do not fit into our genes. You see, historically, we ate only the equivalent of about 20 teaspoons of sugar a year as hunter-gatherer species. 200 years ago, we ate about 10 pounds per person, and now we eat about 150 pounds per person, or about a half a pound each day. We evolved in a world without super grocery stores, convenience stores, fast food restaurants, and we had to work for our food and had limited access to refined foods or excess calories. In fact, our genes are pre-agricultural. We only started farming about 10,000 years ago and only started refining flour about 200 years ago with the advent of the steam-powered engine and the flour mill. With the advent of 15,000 low-fat, also known as high-sugar, high-calorie foods on the market over the last 15 to 20 years, we have created an epidemic of increasing obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. The scientific foundation for the low-fat movement was shaky from the start. 
Madison Avenue got ahead of the medical science to the detriment of all. You see, our bodies normally produce insulin in response to food in our stomach, particularly sugar. We once thought that insulin's only role was to help sugar enter the blood cells to be metabolized, transforming the energy of the sun into ox and oxygen that we breathe into energy that our bodies can use every day to run everything. You see, what, what's too much insulin really does is, is this. It makes you store fat, it makes you increase your appetite, causes heart attacks by making your blood sticky and your blood vessels inflamed. It raises your cholesterol and blood pressure, promotes cancer growth, causes infertility in women, low testosterone in men, and is the number one cause of hepatitis in the country from fatty liver and causes depression and dementia. So balancing blood sugar and correcting insulin is critically important and it's well within reach for, for everybody. Scientific advances have helped us over the last few decades find the way to managing this. And while there are lots of new medications that can help, such as glucophage or octose, they have side effects and only are a band-aid unless used with a comprehensive nutritional exercise and stress management plan. My goal is to make your metabolism more efficient, to make your cells more intelligent and cooperative, not resistant. In other words, you will need less insulin to accomplish the task of balancing your blood sugar. And while I want to tell you how to balance your stress hormones and thyroid function and all your sex hormones and all your brain and mood chemicals, that'll take a few more blogs. For now, I want to show you how you can reset your metabolism of sugar and insulin by stopping the things that knock you off balance and providing the things that put you in balance. And this is exactly what, what you can do by simply doing the following things. One, stop eating too much flour and sugary products, especially high fructose corn syrup. Don't have liquid calories. Your body doesn't feel full from them, and so you eat more all day. Stop processed food or junk food or packaged food. If it doesn't look like food your great-great-grandmother ate, then stay away. Stop eating trans fats or hydrogenated fats. And slow the rate of sugar uptake from your gut by balancing your meals, creating low glycemic meals with healthy protein like nuts, seeds, beans, and small wild fish, organic chicken, healthy carbs like vegetables, fruit, beans, whole grains, and healthy fats, olive oil, nuts and seeds, avocados, and fish oil. I also want you to rough it up. Eat plenty of fiber every day. Eat smaller, more frequent meals. Get an oil change, and you can do that by making your cells smarter, giving them lots of omega-3 fats by taking a supplement of fish oil. Move your body, which improves your cells' ability to work better and respond to insulin and burn sugar faster. So just balancing this one hormone, insulin, can have wide-ranging effects on all your other hormones and brain chemicals. So I want you to just start there and see how good you can feel.